hey, full rotation. These are no longer Game Informer editors. These are developers that kind of, sort of, maybe know each other. We have Arthur Parsons, head of design at TT Games. Hi, yeah, that's me. Welcome, man. You're here last Thank year you. as well. Not this apartment. But... No, no, no. This one's a, a, a good step up. We did it all for you. We got your complaint <laughs> feedback. <laughs> we, we, we spared no expense at Game Informer just for the sake of Lego DC yeah, Super no, Bones here. No, no dubious looking bed in the corner. Um, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good with all no that. No fingernails on the carpet. Spare no, no expense, I no promise. No blood. All right, we have the game director for Hitman 2, correct? Yeah. Jacob, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's an honor to have you. A new voice. A new voice, yes. Yeah, yeah this is a first, right? I, and I'm kind of totally looking forward to the survey afterwards. I have to fill out about the apartment. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Trip advisor, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then the lovable oddball of the crew, lovable. if I may pitch you that way. Legendary video game composer, Legendary. Grant Kirkhope, Hello. responsible for soundtracks to some of the greatest games of all time. Help me out, Arthur. We got Goldeneye. We got Perfect it, it, Dark. It, it, did none of your games I've done. No, that's not your <laughs> band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, got you. I, I know the rare games that you do. <laughs> all the British hits, man. You're responsible all the hits. for all of them. That's right. Yeah. thing is, you get called legendary just because you're old, right? Yeah. It's not because you're good. It's just because you, you just took around for like 20 years. But, it, but it's better than being called veteran. Yeah. Because yeah. At, mean, least, I mean, at least legendary is good. I get called that sometimes as well. Right. It's a bit like, God, I feel like a right old git. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's good to put on the resume, though. Veteran composer. I mean, you yeah. think of like all the different brands you've worked with throughout your career. Like, you just make, what was it? Mickey Ma like Mickey Mania not too long ago? Was it? Mickey Mania? Well, I did Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion. That's did what that I'm thinking of. Australia. I did that, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I did that. How's that experience yeah. overall? Well, then it shut down. So kiss to death, right? Just get right into the game and studio. That went shit. really well. Yeah, 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 that's right. Game did really badly. Like, Shut the studio. <laughs> Were you in a crazy E3 this year, Grant? Because yes. of the Ubisoft press conference, you got up on stage uh, in front of God and Miyamoto, and Miyamoto, most importantly, right. you performed this Donkey Kong medley for Mario Plus Rabbids DLC. Yeah, I tell you what, that was so nerve wracking. Yeah? Like I nearly, you know, cacked myself. I don't can't think of the right words to use, but like that was. Because when they told me to write it originally, it was like four weeks ago, I said, well, we want you to do the trailer piece. You know, normally they never get the composer for the game to do the trailer piece. They always get some library piece. Yeah, usually, yeah right? something, someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, all right, I'll do it, you know, thinking it'll be all right. And then um, I thought it was some kind of general Donkey Kong, you know, do 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 totally. something like that all the way through, like, you know, it'd be really easy. And then David Soliani, the creative director, said, you no, know, we want it at the start a bit more like Fantasia. I was like, uh, so what do you mean by that? I said, well, when he blinks, you know, it's a good delay. And when he jumps, you got, you know, all that kind of quick change stuff and I was like just do a live version of Fantasia well, with Donkey Kong how well, hard can it be yeah. and I was yeah. like alright come on yeah I can do that I can do that so I did it it's like it's all like 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4 like all the different bar changes like that right and then they said to me oh by the way you have to conduct it and I was like <laughs> I've never conducted before really never. are you just waving a stick randomly no no I did point? it right I, I genuinely did it right do you but look like, up a YouTube video of how to conduct an orchestra? <laughs> like, what's that well, process? I did, it, I did it at college, like, I mean, like, you know, what, 30 years ago? I don't know, a long, a long time ago, right? Well, so, being a veteran, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. So, so I didn't know how to do it, but, like, it was hard. Um, we had technical issues. We did rehearse Friday, Saturday, twice on Sunday, twice on Monday morning before the actual thing. Um, a couple of click tracks was going wrong. It had to be all synced because I'd written, like, an orchestral backing track for the out the speakers, the band played live, and then they had to sync to the video, all that stuff that you kind of do. And when I was writing it, just before we had to kind of finish it, I said, oh, we just added 44 frames to the start of the video. Oh, nice. And I was like, do you realize how difficult that is to move the entire thing 44 frames to the right? And they were like, well, can't, it's, it's easy. I said, no, it's not easy, because it's in MIDI. You have to work out what, you know, 44 frames is like a second and a little bit. And it's it's like mathematic. A, it's, like, it's like a bar, a 2-4 two, two, bar and 3 16th. So it threw the whole thing out, so I was completely livid. Oh, uh, so a bit like it did actually work. In the end, it really genuinely worked. But <laughs> I just thought it's going to be a disaster. They're going to hate me. Oh. We did the rehearsal on the Sunday on the Sunday morning. They played the wrong track twice. I have to I have to start by going like that, hands in the air, right? So you put your hands in there. We know to start the click track. I did that. They just played something else. <laughs> I said, really? no, no, it's not it. And it's just a Starling theme or well, something? It was, it was <laughs> that, I think it was the marching band that came on first, their track. Oh, okay. But like the Ease Greenmore was sat right at the front of the rehearsal, oh, right yeah. under. I was yeah. just looking at him going, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's going great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, he's thinking, why have we hired this complete wanker <laughs> to do this thing <laughs> when it's a disaster? And I kind of went again like that, thinking it's Banty right this time. Wrong track again. And I was like, I, had to, I said, look, it's just the wrong track, guys. It's, you're not playing our track, it's just something else, you know. I started oh. to wait around, and then it was just so. Anyway, it went right in the end, but it was a. I shot myself for the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and you had the great moment too, where you get to call out DK Rap. And they said, "Yeah, turn around and like you know, really go for it with the crowd." I says, 
you know, I'm just a bloke. I'm not used to going going for it with the crowd. Yeah. Come on. With a, condu- yeah. with a conducting battle. I know, yeah. It's, like, it's, not, like, it's, like, it's not like you're going to a metal concert going, come yeah. on. It's like, you know, it's a DK rap. It's not really like, Drake or anything, no. is it? So. <laughs> I know. When he shoots you, <laughs> it's going to hurt. Okay, I'm, I'm, totally, like, I'm totally going to see this, but how, how big was the, the orchestra? It was just, we had six six players, right? It's a band yeah. called Critical Hit. So Jason Hayes is a, one of the regional Blizzard composers yeah. who, who composed all the, the tunes that you know from World of Warcraft. Oh. It's his kind of band. And he puts together, um, we had Mita uh, uh, Strauss, who's like a famous metal guitar player lady. She's a place for Alice Cooper, right. which is awesome. Really? And, and we had like four girls at the front that are really, oh, they're all brilliant classical players, but they're all really pretty. So, and they're all, they're all, you know, it's that kind of new thing where you get that kind of thing where you get a pretty girl who's a really good player. That's, that's how the career progresses, you know. Sure. And uh, those girls all look great, play great. Yeah, but it's fantastic. Like, I was just like, you know, this is, this is great. And your makeup up there looked great too. Great. Oh, you I, really, I, I, I tried to, I didn't win anyway, because I thought I'm back to the, I thought, who cares about my face? I've got my back to the audience, so <laughs> get it. it. It worked in the end, but I'm not kidding you. Getting to that point was like, Oh my God, it's going to be a disaster. Yeah. I was going to hate me forever. It, it could have been worse. You could have been sat playing the banjo. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm, just I'm, saying. I'm, I'd probably prefer to play the banjo yeah. at that point. That's true. Okay, you two are from England. Have you ever met, has there ever been any interaction between TT Games, Traveler's Tales, and Grand Kirk Hope's I career? I did talk to somebody there a while ago. I don't know if right. it was you, but I did talk to somebody. Maybe it's your audio director guy. Was it Mike? Mike DeBell? <laughs> did you have a, a sound designer there called Joe something? Oh. Years ago. Oh. And he left to go to Rocksteady and he went somewhere else? <laughs> probably. Oh, yeah, probably. Is I can't Scottish? remember. I could, oh, there's that many. We have that I'm many I'm going to say, right. People. I've just got a funny feeling. I hate I just, to admit I, it, but I can't remember everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really <laughs> sorry. I had some interaction, I think. Yeah, I, just got the, I was probably asking for work, probably. I just didn't get any. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much of your career is that? Just sending emails out of the blue of like, hey, you want me to compose your next game? Not or so much. Not so much. I, people tend to come to me, I suppose. Yeah. I think I get to that point where people are sort of reasonably well known now, so they kind of know that. And like that, like for the Mario guy, Davide loved Banjo Kazooie. So yeah. the minute he had the cash, he wanted to get me to do the to the gig, right? So it comes with the veterans. Yeah. yeah. And th- does he yeah. communicate at that point, like, hey, for the boss theme in particular, I really want you to hit banjo vibes for that, or do you just know that? Well, banjo, it's a Nintendo platform. I should try and hit some more. We did. For, there's a mid boss battle theme in yeah. at Mario Rabbids. It's like a, it was like that's the one you wanted. It's the most banjo esque. Right. But I, right. I, I, I didn't want to. I have too much of that because you know it's like I don't want to get typecast as just being that banjo guy. You know, oh yeah, banjo, absolutely. You know, so uh, so but yeah, so he was a big banjo fan. That's why I got the gig. But Civilization guys got me because they like Kings of Amalur. Or, of course, you know that sort yeah. of different. You know, it just it's but like I, the things that the, the things that I tend to pitch for, I never get. But the things that I just don't even bother about. They're the, they're the ones that come to me. It's really, it's really weird. So. Yeah. yeah, and and speaking as a developer, you know, in, in answer to mm-hmm. what you're saying you know, we generally tend to use the same people. Mm, so yeah. if you work with someone and they've done a really good job on something for you, you'll generally go back. And, and, and so it, it must be difficult for for, for non-veteran composers <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 to kind of break into to, the mind yeah. and get the gig. Because, right. yeah, we do get a lot of people say contact us, but, but you kind of use the same people because they get what you want. And, you know, when, when, when you're explaining how you want, you know, a boss and an action track and a slow track and right. they kind of get it. Mm. So it's, it just yeah. makes it easier to go. You, we've worked with you. You did a brilliant job. We're going to do the same thing again. But like, here's the brief. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. it's like, it's like, it's get, it's like you get like John Williams as with Steven Spielberg forever, right? Because yeah, well, we it's, it's, it's a team, right? Yeah, it's like, I, I, exactly. We have, yeah. I have, we're we're doing kind of we're using the same guy again, right? right. It's like mm. yeah, so he also gets it. How does the game work? What does what mm. does it need from a music perspective? Mm. Also from a kind of technical perspective, the, the the music compositions we use are layered, right? And we're kind of transitioning them while the the game kind of evolves into what whatever happens in the game. Mm. So so he is in on okay. So I need to structure my music like this, and then they he worked very closely with the audio designer in, in, in creating these tracks. But but it, yeah, same guy. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah yeah. And I bet people overly simplify the Lego game soundtracks. Like what are you talking about? You just loop Danny Elfman's themes over and over again and call it a day, don't you? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Lego games are got we have great soundtracks. So we have so much music yeah. in 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 our games. Mm-hmm. Like you know Mike um, uh, and and the rest of the audio department. They they put so much work in. Like there there is there are serious numbers of minutes um, of music. And obviously for us, we we you know us designers are like stupid people. Oh yeah, we just want we want a licensed track. And uh, yeah, can you just do like a disco version? And can you do like a party version? And then like a kind of an old. And every time you say that, it's like like like. 
60 hours of work. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they, and, and you yeah, know, cause we just think, well, hold on. Yeah. We've got this license track doing a disco version dead easy. Yeah. And then we just walk away and I <laughs> can only imagine what we get called. And they're uh, crying back. Oh my yeah. God. No, yeah. Not disco again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, and then, and then when we go to put it in the game, it's like, you know, you're going to hold a button and one of the characters is going to do a stupid dance and it's like a 10 seconds sort of like sting of it. And right. But yeah, yeah. They, These they do sound good. good. We, Music is and audio is so important. To yeah, it, it's insane. It, it's, it's like it's everything. Yeah, mm. the whole the whole trick about going from you know early gray box with no sound whatsoever. Yeah, and is, okay, this is going to be an amazing experience to walk down this corridor, and there's just like a, a gray tunnel of nothing. And yeah. you know this, the, I it, it always create, it creates yeah. the emotion, doesn't it? it the, the, yeah. the, the excitement, the drama, right. the suspense, it's, the fear. And, 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 but, yeah. but I think the the, the the tricky part, like the crazy part, is this whole okay. You have this idea about how this experience, and then the music kicks in. For me, that's also that's always like, oh my god, this is this is it turns into something completely different. It's, it's absolutely a, yeah. on the on the video side. I'm a video producer, and I remember this this old producer, this seasoned veteran producer, a long time ago. He told me a very simple thing, and it's probably so epic stupid i shouldn't even take it as some great wisdom but it was like early on when i was starting to edit he's like oh yeah the video tells you what to think then the music tells you what, what to, to feel, feel. exactly yeah. precisely oh of course yeah. all right that yeah. just clicks everything <laughs> yeah, in. yeah i was just yeah, gonna say like, like the, uh, the um cinematic director on king of Amalor, mark stoltz he was the actor to me we tell the story you'd say how to feel you know yeah but you hear a lot of times in hollywood these days i uh, don't want to manipulate the audience with the music and i think that's a stupid thing to say i kind of feel that isn't that the whole point of the music to manipulate the audience? To give it's sad, it's happy, it's scary, it's whatever you know. Yeah, I think, you think so. It, I just it seems daft. To, it, it, it's like it, you know, as designing an experience, it's like this is this is a very powerful mm. tool, and we should totally use it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. what's the downside? I understand. I don't know. There, I, I, if I, it's not ringing true, I understand. But if the if like the audience is on the roller coaster mm. ride with you emotionally, that just makes it more impactful. I know. So we, I hear that a lot these days. That's why. You, Sometimes you get that kind of blandy soundtrack, like a lot of the big super movies that come out these days. Yeah. They're very big and fantastic, but they're unremarkable. So not walk, the DC stuff. Out, though. I mean, that stuff's great. Of course, right? of okay. course. <laughs> but, but, the, no, but, like, but you walk out, don't you? You don't remember the themes anymore. Right. Like I think when you walk out of Star Wars when you were a kid or whatever, or Indiana Jones or any of that, you remember it straight away, right? But these yep. days, yeah. you maybe don't remember it when you walk out of the theater. Oh, and I, I kind of feel that's. I got that's the, a Aven the Avengers theme is stuck in here. That, that keeps yeah. on playing. Yeah, because Alison Bessie, old school composer, Back to the Future, and that's why. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think some of the other Marvel themes you probably can't remember them because. Oh no, that's. Did you see that video on YouTube where the guys walking the streets and telling people, "Can you sing Harry Potter? Can you sing Star Wars?" And, right. And they do it. Can you sing Iron Man? I can remember Blank. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, we yeah, but... just. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But that's got that kind of classic eighties feel. It's, yeah. it's different, isn't it? I yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think that I, I miss that kind of severe hook in the music these days. I don't, I don't feel like it's as prevalent as it used to be. Yeah. Do you feel like Solo pulled through on that? Did you, did you see, see the film? I've seen it, yeah. Okay, so, all right. I think it's an interesting soundtrack. The more I listen yeah. to it, the more I really appreciate it. Williams did the theme, didn't he? The main, he created the, the Han theme. Solo theme and right. then that's kind of remixed to all hell throughout yeah. the Is that yeah. the thing you're hearing the trailer? Uh, no, the no. trailer has more of like a guitar. Vibe, yeah, but the, it kind of like... It's more orchestral throughout the actual piece yeah. and like some characters have like vocal tracks again which... They haven't done since like the prequels, you know. It's it's an interesting soundtrack. I really mm, like okay. it. John Powell did it right. He's a great composer. Yeah, so yeah, for he's, sure. He's, he's a bit of an old school guy. I kind of feel that the old school guys still do it that way. Yeah. I guess being a veteran, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's a theme <laughs> that's that you know, like, like you know, I, can, I still think of myself that, writing themes that way, like the old way I used to do it before. So. Yeah. Jacob, I want to know how your E3 was. Ah. Yes. Overall, have you Overall, been giving demos? Uh, are we, are we again and again? Talking personally, are we talking game? Because um, personally, personally, I think that it, it's been a blast. Um, it's, I think, to be honest, I like think the last time I was here, like two thousand and four. Wow. So I, I, I haven't done tours of publicity or anything uh, So that was like for peak years. we're launching the Nintendo DS year. <laughs> like, what a Precisely, yeah, I remember that actually. Um, and and uh, the crazy thing back then was that we just shipped Hitman contracts. So there were no press showings of anything because, like, that was that was kind of old news. Right, yeah. like, I think we like we released it three weeks before. So I was just at E three, kind of, you know, checking out things, and that was a blast. And but this time around, they they yeah, that guy over there, he kind of had a had me on a short leash and kind of Warner dragged Brothers. me around. That's so nice. I did, you know tons of interviews and uh, all the different live shows and all that stuff so i think it's like it's it's been quite a ride for me and i've enjoyed it it's been it's been a blast that's a long time 2004 so it's such a long time 
what's the biggest shock? It's like you're, you're Captain America coming out of the ice. Like, what is the most shocking thing? Is it what, louder, yeah. bigger? What's... Well, I think... Well, well I went to um <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are yeah. these cubes? We've got, like, mobile, we've got proper phones now, right? Yeah, now. They, they have they have yeah. cell phones, yeah, and they, they, they that has colors on the TV. Yeah. Uh, it, it's like no, I think um well I think to be honest, I was like okay, I I, I thought it was was bigger. Uh I think that mm, that was my yeah. that was one of the takeaways I had kind of wandering your halls, you know, we smells went, better as well. It's yeah. Um, but we, we there's, um, less, there's less booth beds right now, isn't there? That, really that's is. way different, right? Yeah, that's it's, like it's, it's wild. Really I don't know if I saw deal, one this no. entire no. I, I, To be honest, I wouldn't know be, because right? because yeah. I, I was kind of inside the booth all the time. Right, so right, I, right. I, I just managed to scramble over to the Fortnite people. Hey, can I have one of these foam pick pick axes <laughs> for my son? That that was as far right. as I got away from the booth, right? Mm. Um, no, but it's been a blast. It's like. Um, a lot of people have played the game. A lot of people have commented on you. They, they, we had the setup where you, you would register and you come in and you had the demo and then you would come out and do interviews, but behind closed doors. Uh, but, but everybody who came out kind of had a smile on their face. Uh, How could so you not? I mean, especially the, the finale of your demo, I think is so good where you take out this race car driver a couple different ways and then you do the beautiful thing of they show you the other ways that you could have done it. Yeah, and, precisely. I don't know if you know it, but it, it makes murder very funny. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it just ends on a punchline, basically. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's also what we wanted to do, right? We we wanted you to kind of do this. And, and you know, I guess you played Hitman yeah. uh, and, and the whole thing about you can do this in so many different ways. How How, how do you demo that? Because because if you just played once, you mm -hmm. got your own unique experience, and you don't know that you can do stuff differently. <laughs> so we we kind of talked a lot about okay, so how how can we show this plethora of things you can actually do and get away with, uh, and and the highlight reel at the end kind of solved that to some degree. I know some of some of the people who played, they actually managed to play twice. It kind of do 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 both the snipe and the uh, and the race count right. Okay and. And that's not just you know for the demo that that's how that ends, but but you know in in the real version of the map, right? There's plenty of more uh, going on with her, right? Can you so. help me out with IO over the course of the last year and a half, two years? What that studio has been like? It feels like from the outset perspective, it's I don't know what's happening with IO. I love Hitman. I hope it's doing okay. All right, I guess Warner Brothers has it now. It's back in a big way. Well, that that was kind of how how it was for us as well, right? It's like I don't know what's happening with IO. It's like okay, and and then uh, we we teamed up with Warner, so so it it's been quite a ride. Uh, so help me out though. So you were with Square Enix for so many years. Mm -hmm. You then separated, but yeah. Retained the Hitman license. Yeah. How does that happen? I have no idea. Yeah, that that <laughs> sounds like unlikely to me. Like when someone buys you out, like this gonna yeah. Say, I, I to, like to be that. honest, I, I I can't answer that question. Uh, yeah, you're just confused about it or is it a legal thing precisely right I'm, 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 you know, having worked with the games for so many years right I, I you know this is my I don't know fifth hitman game maybe um and then some Kane and Lynch stuff as well right and, yeah. and 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 we also did an engine on top of the entire thing to just make it even more hard uh, I think that that's like um that that's been quite a quite a ride and then and then we ended on this where okay so okay now you're on your own um so it's been awesome and people have teamed up and rallied and it's like the, this like the whole studio has been reinvigorated so it's really it's mm. like really good right that's now. the interesting part to me is thinking about you guys having worked with hitman hitman for so long i'd imagine there are a thousand different ideas in that studio other <laughs> things you want to do <laughs> but just like the changing of publishers and kind of the mad scramble the independence does that reinvigorate the love for for your old wife here? Well, I, I wouldn't call her the, my old wife okay. um, because I think that, you know, throughout the years, uh, when I started, we did Hitman Contracts, um, which was a really fast production uh, where we rehashed some of the levels from the first game into uh, some redesigns and, 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 and that kind of stuff. And then we did Blood Money where we kind of nailed the sandbox. Yeah. Uh, and then we did Absolution where we went a bit more linear and checkpoint based. And then with, with, with the... the previous game it, it, it turned into a, a, a best of both worlds from blood money and absolution kind of in you know the the awesome ai the good controls and then we had the fantastic level design the fantastic fans so that's kind of that's why it gelled really and and then now continuing that of, as you say we have a billion ideas right just like okay mm. everybody has an idea for the five different hitman missions they would like to try out and right. try to do mm. so it's like um and and 47 he's, he's so versatile so so we can we can do so many things with him and put him in so many places right so it's like 
it, it's going to be awesome. And it, it almost feels like a, I'd imagine each level is like a mini game jam. It is. Right? It is. Completely. We're, we're completely. Saying, right, complete new environment, complete new art yeah, assets. Yeah. Let's just go for yeah. it. it. It's very much this. Okay, so uh, I think I described one of the reporters today. It's like, okay, so we have the main story and then we have the location and we kind of add them on top of each other. And then we ask the question, what could go wrong, right? Uh, and then we ask <laughs> that a lot. So so, so that that's how we go about coming up with these Um and of course, Miami has a certain spectacle to it. Um, and, and to be honest, it's, it's a tall order uh, because, you know, I think I, and sometimes I have envy other games, uh, sci-fi and fantasy, because they don't have to be real. Mm. They, they don't have to make a world that is credible and believable, right? Yeah. We, we just kind of dive in at the deep end. Okay, so let's do a race and there's going to be people working there talking about something they just experienced at home with their wife. And then, so, so we go to great length to make this entire thing come alive. As a, as a, it's, like, it's, it's almost being like being inside a, 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 a theater piece where you as an audience walk around among the actors and, and they have to kind of, it, it's kind of a weird way of describing no, it. No, it's immersive theater for sure. In a yeah, lot of strange exactly, ways. Yeah. Do you think Hitman could ever work in a fantastical setting? Could we ever get medieval okay, don't or go sci-fi? Post-apocalyptic. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, you say that? did you pick up on that, right? Everybody is doing post-apocalyptic. Uh, it's like, I, 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 this, this was the E3 of post-apocalypse. Yeah, uh, you're right. I had the... Uh, it's just like, come on, someone be a bit more inventive, <laughs> please. Again, isn't it? I like, feel like we, yeah. I feel like we already got over that hump, like maybe six years ago, and now yeah. it's just this big round two. Maybe in a similar way, where it's like, yeah, it's streaming, and the next console being a streaming console. I feel like we went through that six years ago, and now this year again, it's like, nope, that's the future again. Everybody's like, all right, I guess we're back here. Someone just make a bright future. Let's be come on. Yeah. a little bit of optimism somewhere, or, or even water world, the marketing right? for rage. Yeah, just a water world yeah. game. Is it too much go. to ask? Just Someone do something. I'm that's... so glad you're saying this because I had exactly the same thing. Like, oh my God, that's a lot of yeah. bleak futures mm. in here. Or, or make post apocalypse where, where everything freezes. Why does it have to just Ooh. be desolation? Yeah, get that. Yeah. What was it? 2012, Day After Tomorrow, that yeah. Roland Emmerich film. Yeah, yeah, yeah more good. stuff like that. Yeah, come on. But Lego games are always upbeat, right? Yeah, okay, always you're, you're fulfilling that. that Absolutely, but yeah, we can't do it on our own. That's why it's great to have these guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. Bright and colorful. There we go. There's Miami. Like, I was just waiting for Will Smith to walk. <laughs> so, uh, it's, yeah, I, no, but it's, it, you know, variety is what we want. You know, um, yeah, so when you're spitballing ideas for Hitman, please don't have like, right, there's 100 Agent 47s and they kind of fly in. And then they all land, and then like the last one, like the, the doesn't get sniped. Arthur, Let's not do but, that. But, uh, Arthur, I'm, I, I, I think I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's stupid and cliche. It's a joke for the party. It's like I'd like to play that game. I think I want to see it. Oh, well, there you go. Just get an Agent Forty Seven uh, skin in. Uh, yeah, Fortnite, that's pretty then, Agent Forty Eight and Forty Nine and Forty Nine. Dude, it writes itself. Go. Any temptation in IO to make that battle royale? There must have been one discussion around the water cooler or something. I, actually, I'm trying to think of if there has been a, a kind of a battle royale discussion. I, I'm, I'm not sure. It's I, never I, come up. I think probably every studio every ever studio has is, had that discussion at else? some point. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I haven't been in the office for ages. So, is that right? Um, yeah. No, we're, we're too busy doing other stuff. You guys have a crazy cycle. Lego Incredibles is coming out this tomorrow. Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow. Wow. Or you have a release tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So tomorrow in the States, Lego Incredibles is out. Uh, okay. Day and date with the new movie, which by all accounts... Um, is good. is like incredible. Like yes, the reviews. Yeah, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, every yeah. review I've seen is mm. I, what was it ninety something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my Tomatoes. god, that's mm. amazing. Here's I here's the part. Nine point two. And I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here. There's a part that worries me. Credible is one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah. I just when I go to Rotten Tomatoes and go on that landing page, it's like all right, reviews off the charts, great. But unless every review is just like. I'm weeping. I'm just, I'm skeptical. It's like, I need people to be having orgasms in the theater to make this movie worthwhile. Oh, okay. Is that doable? No, you okay. can't. You, like, an animated character cannot make you orgasm. I, I don't. I think the internet would very much oh, make actually, a difference. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. Is yeah. That a, was it TT Fusion that made Lego Incredibles? Or yes. That... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, like that, that, that team, um, I, I think I, I've been working with them for the most part of this year and uh, spending a lot of time with them refining it and uh okay, help me out understand understanding your role so it's head of design for overall tt games yeah for all the console titles so so kind of so not worlds uh yeah no yeah, yeah that, okay that, yeah that, that works as a console okay great. um yeah so so yeah i'm involved in all those titles um in one way shape or form um some more so than others um so yeah i've been working closely with uh pete the game director and the team over there um just getting incredible to be like 
like as good as it can be because that like that is that and monsters the first incredibles and monsters are they're my two favorite pixar movies yeah mm-hmm. um and so like as an ex game director i wanted to game direct that game but obviously it's not my job anymore um so, so but, you're not directing uh super villains no um so uh steve Sharples, who's been my right hand man oh, for yeah. 10 years um is game director and andy holt um is also game directing um he's another great designer of mine um yeah there's just you know we have a i think i've got 42 designers um wow. across the whoa. different g- games wow. and, and they're, oh, all, whoa, yeah. Yeah, they're all cool yeah that's I got, a lot of I got that many designers <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you kind of, kind of steer all those yeah. ideas like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, so I just take credit for all their hard work. Now, what is that transition like? I mean, you say you want to get back in the trenches, but like, this is a recent thing where you're head of design overall. Does that just mean you can't get in the weeds Yeah, as since much? last November, I think. Oh, wow. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Um, and then a little bit before that. Yeah, I, 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 I miss it. It's like I don't have a posh office. I sit on the floor with everyone else. Yeah. Um, not literally on the floor. We kind of got desks. Um, <laughs> are, you, are you getting down there and saying, hey, what about this puzzle? What about this puzzle? Yeah. Or, what is, or does it yeah. just mean more emails? What, it, what does it mean to be head of design? Um, it means I get the blame when things go wrong. Um, uh, no, it, it means right. It means that I can sit there and and we can go in a meeting and just really just have fun. I I, I can just concentrate on looking at the games as games. Yeah. And everyone else can 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 worry do about how to and, yeah worry about actually, yeah making yeah. it. Um, do you guys have good internal terminology at TT Games overall for describing your approach to puzzles? Because I remember on the Dark Siders two cover story trip with Game Informer, one of the producers there had something to say, and I don't know if it's common in industry, but he had what he called nuzzles, which was not a puzzle, but basically a puzzle. Just a series of little obstacles that are kind of sort of puzzles, but they're so light, they're not really puzzles. We'll call them nuzzles. Do you guys have the equivalent there? Because it seems like a no, lot of No, we those... do now. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really cool. But that's what the Lego games are. It's a series of, you're not going to lose sleep over these puzzles, but no. it's just a series of little <laughs> obstacles in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Is it reminds me of a conversation during dinner. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. I, yeah, we just take a different approach to things. Um, we we have our own internal terminology for everything, and we we'd like to try and make sure we do the best we can with everything. But no, don't, we don't have any fancy names. But yeah. I think we that's the first thing on Monday. I'm going to go in, and we're going to invent some names for like a layered puzzle and a, just a first one shot and right. um, some basic props. We're going to go. And, we're going to make some names. Up. <laughs> do we have champions internally of people being like? Let's just make this a real stinker of a puzzle. Let's stump all these Lego fans. They'll get to this one, and this is going to be... This is the end. <laughs> yeah, this is just like the witness in this one chapter of a Lego game. Oh, we have that. And, and, and there are times when we sit there in a review meeting, and it's like, just remember, guys, this could be someone's first ever video game, right? Yeah. <laughs> just remember, someone might not actually have 20 years of video game practice to the, to the name. Let's try and... Just pull that back a little bit, make it accessible. Um, right. And then six iterations later, you're there. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes at the same time, it's like, come on, you know, six, seven-year-old kids have got like more knowledge than this. Let's just like up it. Um, yeah. And the proof of the pudding is when you get the kids in. So we do that. We get kids in and we all stand there kind of like with clipboards looking all officious and they're, <laughs> while they're playing. And, and it's like, he's not laughing. Interrogate him. And it's like, okay, this one's stuck. Interrogate this one. And, and you know. Just find out what that have have that thing changed over time. Uh, you know, going back to the f- early Lego Star Wars stuff and all that stuff. Have the kids changed? Um, in terms they're of puzzle solving, games. yeah, yeah, they, they, you know, I think they've got a lot better at games. Yeah, because what was it? Two thousand five was Lego Star Wars, so that's what thirteen years ish. Um, kids are kids are much better at games now. Do you think is it over, it's just an oversimplification to say Minecraft changed a lot of things for advancing younger gamers and how much we can expect yeah, of them? I, I, I wouldn't say it was Minecraft. I think it's most like this this constant presence of device that is capable of mm. gaming. I yeah. think that that that's that's the factor that changes this. Yeah, I, th- I think that's true. I think that like my son's fifteen right now. I think I think back to when he started playing games. You know, he, he was on his DS. That's his kind of first thing he used to got. Like, I guess when you're when you're a parent. You probably gonna go the DS route for your kid first yeah. thing, right? Because it's safe and all that, you know. And I think they do get really. Everyone does that, so kids are getting far more astute at getting, being better at games younger. I think, and I think you do think that they they can't work it, but you leave them to it, and they will suss it out. Yeah, right? they will suss it what to do, and they'll be on the PC before you know it, and then you know, yeah. it's, and they're off, you know. Yeah, I think that it's it's a surprise when you have it. When I think back to when I. When I, when I was a kid, it wasn't any video games because I'm so bloody old, right? So <laughs> you know, so you know, what I mean, it's it's definitely different. I think kids are more used to that having screens from the birth. 
right? Yeah. Literally within a couple of years, because parents are going, give them that, and they'll be quiet for 10 minutes, you can get a bit of peace and quiet, you know? <laughs> I think, I mean, we bought our son a DS because he woke up at 6 or 30 in the morning every day. Every day. Yeah. So I thought, so in the weekends, play with this, Max, yeah. and let your parents sleep <laughs> in a bit, yeah. which has yeah. worked great, but now he's addicted to games. So no, no but, but actually, yeah. I, I saw this. There was this uh, stand at, at the West Hall entrance where there was a tiny drawing of a girl with with a with a tablet, and then just say, "It's not a phase." <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. like, it, it's like it, game, <laughs> gaming doesn't stop. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think I think quite a lot of kids now play a game while watching a yeah, YouTube video that, of someone the, know, playing a game that at the same time. That, I know that. Mad, I'm not thought, quite sure how they get their eyes I to know. go. To, like focus but um i know i know internally in my family um you know the kids do that yeah mm. they're watching and playing at yeah. the same time my daughter, my daughter watches doctor who and plays a game at the yeah. same time well, that's She's impressive 12, right? well no yeah but like, it's a bit like no it's yeah. impressive that like like a 12 year old likes doctor who so much that's okay she loves doctor who. She loves more it. children should like doctor absolutely yes yeah, so it should uh, be real shouldn't it yeah it should be <laughs> yeah. well i think that the, the, the weird thing is when you know sometimes i'm playing all oh, watch with my son and then uh then you you know he's not he's not joining the group. It's like it's like well, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then there's no we're on Discord with kind of Jason rooms, and he's not replying. It's like well, yeah, but what's going on? And you kind of have to yell. Uh, and then then it's like then he's on YouTube. So while we're waiting for the next round, mm. then he's on YouTube. Like, come on, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm what's going on here? I thought we were playing a game, and all of a sudden he just zones out. And, <laughs> okay. Does he I play- to, but I used to think like when you're a kid, like you used to get on your bike and go to your friend's house and play and go out and play something, right? Now my son sits in his bedroom and all his friends are on Discord and yeah. they're all playing Fortnite yeah. or whatever it happens to be. That's that, that, because they can get everyone together every time. Like when you might have got on your bike to get your friends, you know, back in the, you know, back in the day, they couldn't come out and play, but he could, you know, all, but now it's like, everyone's on Discord, just, you know, it's just, it's changed, it's complete, my, my son, I bought a bike, he's been on it, like, he's been on it twice, probably, yeah. in like five years. Uh, it's probably seized up yeah. from my <laughs> own, <laughs> the garage. It's, it's, just, it's just, it's so different, isn't it? It really has changed so yeah. much. Well, including, like, like, you see Super Villains here, it has a, a selfie mode, Yep. And roping those kids, <laughs> trying to get them into this whole thing again. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. Gotta do it. Yeah. You got to. You got to do that. Um, and the, yeah, but but that also involves what you do with the games. Like the whole custom um, character creator that we've put in for for, right. for super villains is. Um, it's about customization because it comes down to us having watch kids, and you know I, I know internally my kids when they play say Rocket League. They spend more time mm. customizing their cars totally. than they do in the match. Yeah. Mm. It's like a five minute match, but they spent 15 minutes customizing the yeah. car. Mm. And it's like, oh, what do you think of this trail? And it's like, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't care. Can we, just, <laughs> can we play the game? Because, you know, I'm ticking clock, got to walk the dogs, you guys got homework. It's like, um, but no, you know, and, and that's like, like, kids now really, really want that kind of engagement. Mm. You know, Fortnite's a great example. Um, I, I got roped into to play it because I, I I was more playing PUBG, um, and I was sat there watching um, watching Lil play it, and so she's playing, and I was just sat there sort of going, you know, you're running away from someone like they're shooting at you, but you've turned your back and run. You've got no materials to build, and you're running. It's like when you play a shooter, you run backwards so you can still see and you can protect <laughs> yourself. All right, if you're so good, Dad, you have a go. I was like. <laughs> Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I, I haven't played this. Okay, let's try this. Um, and then you know, I, I played it. I was I did, did all right. I came 12th. Um, uh-huh. I, I had my kill stolen, but dad, you did really well to almost get it. Uh-huh. It was like, um, and then I, I was like, okay, I'm going to play this. Oh, you've got to buy the battle pass. I was like, why? You can't go in a noob skin. <laughs> yeah. I can't go in a what? And it's like you can't go in a noob skin. It's and like, then you ask, okay, so what's the difference? Does do does it make me better? And no, then the, then the yeah, answer is like, no, no, it's yeah. just it's just how you look. There's no difference. No. Precisely. But they they've got a better glider and they've right. got a better this and they've got and that's exactly what this generation is. They they want engagement and the only way they can engage is by having cool stuff to do. Mm, and, yeah. and I get that. It's the personalization. It's the, the phone it's, covers. It's like the, you know stickers no, on the MacBooks. You know, and, it just reminds me of you know my childhood. Right, the whole. Uh, you know what clothes are you wearing at school and this is just isn't it just the yeah, same it's self-expression i yeah, think it's exactly. great yeah mm. it, it's it's it is that self-expression but I, I dread to think what cars are going to be like in 10 years time <laughs> I, I oh interesting yeah. effective customization in games on actual physical cars yeah it's gonna be like mm. smart cars with the clip on clip off you know because you can do that with a smart yeah, car. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you're gonna end up with a tesla that's that's kind of got yeah well you press that button and then that side goes per lesson and then this bit does because elon musk will do it because that guy's just like Whatever. A, he, he he's an alien that's been sent back to like teachers future tech um, <laughs> the guy's a genius jacob did you notice a lot of that with the last hitman of people just i mean i'm trying to figure out i'm still trying to wrap my brain around 
the just crazy momentum around that last game for you guys. Yeah. Was it night and day compared to previous releases? And how much of that do you think was Twitch and just sharing online? Well, I think well, I think Hitman is very well suited to kind of for self expression yeah. uh, because you can do you know you know couch co op Hitman with a friend. And it it's very well suited, kind of. It's, it's good entertainment to watch people. We just did a live stream today from the Three Coliseum, where we kind of did the same. With we had Sven in the back playing, and then uh, me on the stage with uh, Christian, and 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 we were kind of just, you know talking as if we were playing Hit, Hitman alongside Sven about the whole thing. And I think the game the game does a really good job. It, it, it's like it, it, you you kind of make it your own, right? So so it's it's exactly the same. How do you perform your uh, assassination? It's kind of sounds bizarre. Um, so it allows people to be egomaniacs as they no, play but the it, game it's, it's like it's it's like making it my own experience, right? So yeah. so whenever two Hitman fans meet and they play the same mission, they always have crazy different stories to tell. Oh, I did this and this and this, and I did that and that and that. And I think that that's that's you know that's what the game can do so well that that it gives you your own kind of experience and i think that 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 makes it unique in a way right um a lot of games will give you the same experience and they're not bad games but you know if you could play a game and i could play the same game and we would get the same you know okay then the bus rams through the house and this is where the boat sinks and all that stuff right um but we would get the same experience and i and 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 i think a lot of people are, are totally fine with that um but but you know th there's something about this where it just becomes my experience and i think that that's a super powerful thing and do you think that's why the last hitman game hit a new threshold or how much of it do you think is just the amount of freedom and player agency you put in that game compared to do you think the episodic structure was crucial or how would you how do you guys look in retrospect on the episodic release i think release i think that? um you know teaching players i i i built the tutorial of uh, the previous game um and teaching players how to play Hitman, that's that's a tall order because the game can do so many things. So so yeah. so so kind of we deducted, okay, so so what what is the least amount of tools you need to perform a somewhat successful hit? And then we kind of began with that. And then we at some point we're sitting discuss, uh, discussing discussing uh, what, what what to do about the whole flow. And then we we, we kind of came up with hey, let's let's do it again. Let's play in the mission once more, but this time ask you to do it differently, and then tweak it a bit to give you some more tools. And then, and and um, I, 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 at the at the point, it felt kind kind of cheeky to just ask people to do it again, because like, okay, I just played it, so so okay, so you want, to, but but the whole uh, training facility kind of metaphor, we 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 kind of kept the entire thing in, kind of allowed for that. Whereas if if you played, you know, hey go raid the house and then you just killed all the bad guys and now oh do it again it's like but i just killed them right, but this was right. a simulated thing so it kind of warranted that okay it's actually okay that we can we can ask players to do this once more uh and i i think it actually worked uh very well because then then you got into the whole thing that that okay a hitman level is not to be kind of taken in once it's it it can totally stand up for it's a world you know to live in for a little bit yeah, yeah and we've you know we've seen people play the the thing for you know for, you know some players kind of finish the game in, in 15 20 hours that's fine awesome they had a good time move on next game and then you had we had a lot that like okay 50 to 100 hours and then we had you know there were even some that surpassed thousands of hours right wow. which is like mm. wow Thank you. That's uh, like me with Advance Wars. <laughs> <laughs> That's your game, your go-to. Yeah, like E3 2018, where was Advance Wars? Mm. Just, and then yeah. call the it Switch. Switch Wars. That's yeah. a good name. What, 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 the same is, game. is there Advance Wars for Switch? Switch? No, there's not. Well, they're releasing. So, of course, you know, uh, smaller people like Chucklefish, they're publishing a game. I think they're actually developing the game. Oh my gosh, I wish I could remember the name of it, but it's very much Advance Wars with more of like a fantasy vibe. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't want that. I want Advance Wars. You want like <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> intelligence yeah. systems, yeah. Advance Wars. Just robust. like people ask for like, you know, a Metroid right. and a Mario and, you know, whatever it may be. I want Advance Wars. Here's mm. the problem. Intelligent systems, they're making these Fire Emblem games. Some people enjoy them. Plenty of people have enjoyed them. Nope. But they're just cranking yeah. those things out. Just give us one Advance Wars. I don't want any more just code name Steams. None of that stuff. <laughs> take a breath. Give me an Advance Wars, and then you go back to it. It's fine. I like DT Games saying, hey, just take a breath on a franchise for yeah. a while. Sure, you guys have just been sprinting for 30 years on Lego games. God. So yeah. your new position, is it bizarre? Here's what I want to understand and maybe it's too abstract and weird of a concept but like you were going from marvel to dc marvel to dc back and forth over like last five years more than 
anybody in the world in terms of like your day-to-day job. It's yeah. crazy that position. Now being head of overall design, are you just a little bit Marvel, a little bit DC, a little bit Star Wars, a little bit Incredibles, just a little bit everything at once? Or do you still feel like meeting to meeting, you have to get in a new mindset based on the IP? No, the great thing is like the game directors I've got, yeah. they're the ones with the knowledge. So I just take them into a meeting with me because um, okay. no, no one can hold that and retain that much knowledge. Just like um, tiny details from DC lore type of stuff? Yeah, exactly. Or, okay. you know, it's, you know, we, we can all hold a certain amount. You know, I, I've done, you know, this is the fourth DC game I've been involved with and I've done Crazy. three Marvel games. So that's seven. I, I, I've got that knowledge in my head. Yeah. But when it comes to, say, something like Incredibles, um, I, I kind of, I, you know, what was it, 14 years ago was, was the, the first movie. I kind of remember what happened. Um, but it's down to like Pete as the game director to have that knowledge because he's just, he'll have rewatched that movie like 10, 15, 20 times. Um, and then he's the one that saw uh, Incredibles 2, like all the bits and pieces before it's out so that he's got all that knowledge. So he didn't get it spoiled? I didn't. All right. You did. He really? did. He did. Yeah. So yeah. Is that yeah. possible for you not to get spoiled? Yeah. No, 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 like, it doesn't just casually. Exactly. Come up? All the Avengers and DC and. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I suppose. Um, no, but yeah, but even though you've read something or seen something or, um, like I, I'll dial it all the way back because it's a bit of a Pixar reference to, to when we did uh, Finding Nemo. So we flew out to Pixar. And I oh, sat... God, this is like pre-Lego Traveler's Tales, right? Oh, yeah, a long time okay, ago. Okay, yeah. Um, so we got flown out to Pixar, went into uh, like a theater, um, the, the director, uh, Andrew Stanton, I think it was, and there's all these clay maquettes of, of, of you know, uh, Nemo and Dory and Marlin and everyone. And we sat down to watch um, a hand-drawn animatic. Yeah. Okay. Fully voiced. And, you know, it was like 96 minutes long, but it was all hand-drawn. Like, it, it, it was like a flick book. Yeah. Um, and that didn't spoil that movie. So and then we worked on the game. We did the design, all the rest of it. When we went, to, when I went to the cinema to watch it, I kind of knew what was happening, but it was still exciting. When we because did of the soundtrack, right? Yeah, <laughs> Fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. is the same. Yeah, it's like oh, you know, saw all of that behind the scenes. You know, even went to like a few days down on the set and stuff. And then when you, when you see the movie, because there's things that you don't know. Like yeah. uh, Fantastic Beasts is a great example because you know the the the, the, the big smoke monster kind of right. uh, obscure, uh, obscure, yeah, 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 obscure, yeah. yeah, at the end. Well, we, it was written in a script and it, it was kind of like uh, referred to, but there was no visualization no. of it. Yeah. So you don't see that. You don't see some big explosion in the VFX and mm. the rest of it. So you can still enjoy all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so do your guys read all the comics like to get all the kind of the, all the law to get do they do that whole thing? <laughs> yeah. So um, on the previous game to, to this one, um, we, we, we kind of generally tried to give people a reading list because you know, you've got a team of 150, 200 people. They're not all going to like what they're working. You know, they're not yeah. all going to be DC right. fans no, no, no. Right. Uh, or Marvel fans or Harry Potter or whatever. So, so we kind of write them a, a like a read and watch list. And it'll be um, these comics, like recommended reading. It's like going to university or, or high school. Uh, <laughs> recommended reading, recommended watching. They'll be excited on Thursday. Advanced yeah. reading, advanced watching. Right. Right. examples for like super villains is like, Number one, probably see Suicide Squad, everybody. And then, like, moving on, like, what's, like, the yeah. good deep cuts so you recommend? It's like, it's like, you know, Forever Evil, um, because that comic series is has, has got the, the crime syndicate in, okay. um, who we've got in the game. Um, and then in terms of, like, movie watching, it, it's like, you know, like, original Batman. You know, yeah. Tim Burton's Batman. Yeah. Because, because the only that, Batman, I'm afraid. It's yeah. the only person. That is, <laughs> oh, dare you. Ah. Those, those first two... But they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're. Um, first one and a half. And Danny Elfman is about the score. <laughs> yeah, and, and so it is. It's like yeah. it, it's like you know. Here, here's a read. Here's a watch. You know, and, and things like you know, Flash TV series. You know, like a couple of episodes or um, Legends of Tomorrow, an episode. And it, it's yeah. it's really just like to get behind who these characters are, who these like stories are, and, and things so like much that. fun. I don't yeah, know whose job it is. Like, biology, like, straight so. after like you know, uh, Infinity War, I'm on Wikipedia finding out all about Captain Marvel and all, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go, because I remember the comics was a kid, but I didn't get that far, you know. Yeah. So you kind of read the lore behind it and you see that she's got some kind of weird scroll that whatever it is going on and the, <laughs> and Marvel gave her the powers and I'm kind of with it yeah. now, you know, and all that stuff, you know. You no, no, no. Work with yeah, us. I'm, I'm, with you. I'm, not, I'm a total sucker for the yeah, whole Marvel, yeah. MCU, yeah. all world building stuff, how everything mm. kind of connects. And I think the, when you do these Lego things, um, 
and and you work with Marvel and 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 and, and DC, are, are you then connecting to 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 the MCU, or is it kind of completely separate, or are there kind of actual connections? You know, they're canonical, I, I, like someone's playing with these Legos and these events. Yeah, but no, no but but it's, it's small. It's small. That, that, no, that, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, well, yeah. there were Legos in Age of Ultron. Technically, Thor stepped on them, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, we we kind of like to. To, to think that we're authentic as we can be to yeah. everything. Um, so yeah, you know, like like Ant Man and the Wasp is out on the seventh of July, yeah. I think. Mm. Um, and Lego Marvel Super Heroes Two's got some. I think the last uh, last pack of the season pass comes out that day, um, which has some nods to to yeah. where that movie goes. Um, but not to the point where it spoils anything. It's just no, but it's got it, it, those it, characters it, it, and that lore, precisely and, and, right, and, and and basically a sprinkling of what that magic's about, and, yeah. and that's that's kind of what we what we do. It has to be authentic. Everything. Like, yeah. Well, sometimes you're going to get a difference between the comics and the movies, right? Yeah, all so the time. So at that point, what yeah. do you do? Do you go over the movie side? Or do you stick to the comic side? Comics. Because where comics. did the movies come from? The comics. Ah. Right. So if the if movie's got it, not straight to the comics, you'll forget that and just go with the comic. That's how it should really be. Yeah, and, unless it's unless it's like something where we are doing a movie like a, a movie game it's, right. it's the game of the movie right but if it's something like like super villains super villains is the original story we wrote in tandem with dc right um and it, it's inspired by all the sh all the tv shows um loads of movies loads of comics um a little bit of pop culture and some other stuff but that if, if we're ever in doubt you just dial back to like so if it's an obscure character that's in the game we go back to like the original version right like the creator made this version with these powers and this stuff it, he might have been reborn or it might have been reinvented but this is the one that, that we should use because right. that's yeah. yeah that came out of that guy's imagination mm. the very first guy that came up with that mm. um so yeah i'll always you know the, the, the team will always go back to back to the comics but I, i'm lucky i've got a couple of guys on the team that are like into it like le another level they know everything right yeah, yeah yeah and and it's like they know so much stuff <laughs> where it's just like i can just like you know before we do like a live um panel or something i, I can just be like oh, can i just quickly check this for me and the other, <laughs> like, what, 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 what issue is this and it's better than google because yeah. google can be wrong yeah yeah where, right. whereas like people like joe they're no never wrong it's just like <laughs> and he'll send back this this detailed report and it's like brilliant thank you very much yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just like a mind of information i just need to like a permanent connection mm. some cybernetic thing i'll ask elon musk i really i really enjoyed like going into like that stuff and find that out straight from infinity war like it's maybe yeah. go it's really good to go into it and go oh my god who'd have thought that, that they invented that so long ago and it's been changed and all that yeah. stuff i really thought that i really found that interesting i really enjoyed yeah. you know reading up about it and you know it's been really good i really liked it well my, yeah. my, uh, my 18 year old stepson sam right so he went and watched infinity war um and, and and i hadn't seen it he came in from the cinema and he knows that i'm a bit of a nerd he goes oh my god we have to talk. And I was like, <laughs> what, what do you mean? Because I, I, I gradually introduced him to the, the wider Marvel movies because he, right. he liked X-Men, but he hadn't really got into all the others, like right. Thor and everything else. Mm. So anyway, I got him into them. He'd watched some, and before he went to see Infinity, where he said, oh, what do I need to watch to be up to date? So yeah, then, and this one, this one, journey, this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, 18 yeah. movies. You can yeah. go with these yeah. couple, but th these are kind of essentials. <laughs> right. And he's like, we have to talk. I was mm. like, oh, right, where are we going? Okay, and then, off to the cinema. <laughs> who's this character? What's this? Why are they doing that? Mm. Who does that? you know this character this has happened and that and i was like sam i haven't seen the movie mm. i kind of feel like i have now right <laughs> but like you know and but it's great that that, that you get that energy mm. about wanting to know about other stuff after finit well i think my son talked in most he never talked to me in his life like, <laughs> it's like he just, i just like i had a massive conversation about all oh, that and this and this and this and you know i think it's that it could be this and i was like oh my god you never talked to me yeah. what, you know what's happened you know you yeah. know it's, 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 it's i think that movie's been a real it's made everyone talk, hasn't it? Because yeah. it, everyone thought, you know, it's supposed to be like a two-parter, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, and it is. And then it was like, oh, no, it's going to be a single. But I was like, when, it, when it left on a cliffhanger, we're all like, hang yeah. on a minute. Like, you know, I think, been, I think they did that so fantastically yeah, well. But I, yeah, know, yeah, I, I, always get, I don't know about you. I always get asked to explain the post-credits as well. <laughs> That's right, what yeah. does this mean? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I Just after seeing it, I left the cinema and I stopped to Google. What's going on? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. What's that logo? Everybody in the theater yeah. just automatically like, what is happening? Yeah. Can some comic book nerd around me explain mm. what I'm looking yeah, exactly. at? Exactly. But impossible. but I think but, but I think going going to the cinema and watching a Marvel movie, it's, 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 it, I think it's hilarious that that you know some people are in the know and some are not, yeah. and those who yeah. are not, they just leave, and yeah. everybody else is just looking at you know mm. six minutes of in credits of thousands of amazing people who've done CGI and mm. acting and stunts and whatnot. So many. 
and 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 then the payoff it hits. I think it's yeah. it's, it's I remember, awesome. I obviously watched ET about about a month ago, and the credits just kind of went. That was it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. five was like, super <laughs> <was> like three <laughs> hours. Steven like, Spielberg, Spielberg, Drew Barrymore, <laughs> Elliot. That's, that's it. That's <laughs> it. It's literally that's it, right? And you watch the Marvel that like, like, video more. It's just like. My God, when's it going to finish? There was oh, so many visual artists. Yeah, oh, it's, 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 it's the same for, for, mm. for any of the movies. Yeah, 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 Justice incredible. League was exactly yeah, the same. Just so many people mm. because they're, they're just such big productions. Yeah, these days. Can't imagine, can't, yeah. so, so many people. It's something crazy. I was playing uh, the demo for, for your game there and, and just thinking about like, if you rounded up every voice talent that ever was a part of a Lego game at some point, that's just the entire industry at this point. Like, <laughs> it is like a weird funnel where every talent in the industry at some point is going to be involved in a Lego it, game. It, it could actually be that they're, they're all in DC Supervillains. Oh, is that right? There are, I can't, I can't remember the exact number. I've got a feeling it's like 96. Wow. Um, Actors. Something like that, yeah. There, it's just, in terms of like the, 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 the heavily voiced characters, um, and yeah, it's like kind of top tier talent. It was like, it's so exciting. Wow. Um, yeah. mm. Grant, because, what do you think yeah. about voice actors? You know, I, we, like some of the games that I've done, I've not had a, not an awful lot of people, like, voice talent, but we did that, that Kings of Zamalor had a lot of voices. In oh, that, right, that. right. I remember I was dying to get Claudia Black, so I think she's fantastic. I loved her in Farscape. Ooh, yeah. right? We couldn't afford it, so we got a Claudia, Claudia Black lookalike. Yeah, sound alike, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you know, so, so I kind of missed out on that one, really. But, but, but she did the trailers for the game, but she didn't actually do the, the in game stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. A bit like that, that. I've never really been in a game where there's been really somebody super famous that I, you know, because I kind of think you know, I was already direct. I thought then I thought fantastic, I'd be able to go and you know hang out with Claudia doing this voiceover, but she never did it. So, <laughs> but like, where you guys were the king? Were the original voice actors over there? I don't know, but think then it was just like grunts, wasn't it? Like you know, it's just me going because I did it because nobody else could be asked to do it. So except I, yeah. for Conkers, right? Right. Cause, cause oh yeah, that was the first. It's one of my proper. top ten games of all time, by the way. That, right. that really? game. I, yeah, I, it's it's it's. Congress it, Bedford, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because of the humor. Jacob in it. isn't buying yeah. it. By the way. Well, no, I, 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 because yeah. of the regionalized accents. Yes, it's, that was Chris who did them all, right? The, the, the design guy, he did all the voices for that. Just really? Yeah, he's got a great voice like that. Oh, that's, that's the first phenomenal. time they could get. Did he, he even sing the Puma? Puma no, that was the other guy, Chris Marlowe, the programmer. Okay. Right. But I like, think about that game. It's the first time we, we, we got the MP3 encoder. They got the license for it, so we could crunch the, the, the crunch it down. We couldn't right. have the yeah, space yeah. otherwise. We did try. That game, Dream, before we went to Banjo, we did a full voice in that, but we just couldn't fit it in. It was, you know, on a cartridge, yeah. not the space. But like that, because we got the MP3 encoder thing, and they, they did some kind of backdoor thing where, because it came with something, we could use it in the game. So it's some kind of that actually end up paying for it, or some weird thing like that, because it's pay license fees to yeah. whatever they're called, you know. Um, but there was some Pre-license weird license fees. Yeah, there was, there was <laughs> some like weird, the yeah, Wild there was, West. Yeah, there was some weird <laughs> thing where because they had some bit of software, they could somehow have the MP3 encoder and it got into the game and it worked. Uh, but that with Chris did a lot, an awful lot of those voices. And Chris and Robin, the the the, the, the guy who did the music, uh, they were massive movie buffs, so they fitted every little pastiche in they could possibly could, like the, the Dracula bit and all that, you know. So it was oh fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's game, just it, that is, uh, yeah, I love that game. Mm. I, I and I, and then obviously when it got it, 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 it got uh, an Xbox it. remastered, yeah, didn't it? yeah. Um, and I bought it again, and I played it again, and I still loved it again. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, yeah, now I'm ready for it again. Just don't, don't change. Just I don't. I don't even want it high def. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just it it low low. I just want it. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that so. weird? Where a lot of people come up to you, Grant, like walking around the show floor, even at E3, and saying, "Like, when are you going to make a new Perfect Dark? Come on, Grant Kirkhope." It's mostly, <laughs> yeah, it's mostly when you're going to see Banjo Three. That's what you're right. mostly get, right? That's, that's the like, number one request. Yeah, that's like never, no. I won't you know, grab never. by the Ghoulies too. Uh, so oh. that, yeah, that's, the that bought, that's the man that bought Banjo the Ghoulies. You're the only one, right? <laughs> I, no. You know what? I, I don't care what anyone says about that game, right? Because I'm. I hate to say it. I didn't enjoy Banjo as much. Oh, <laughs> However, I grab by the Ghoulies too, so that's all right. Grab by the Ghoulies, I really actually enjoyed it. Yeah, and I don't know why. I must, yeah, like you say, I'm probably one of the few, but I really enjoyed it. I, liked I like it. that. I, I don't that know game. why qualifier. Yeah, that's I like that game. It's good fun. Like I, I kind of think when you get when you do a haunted house game, it's just fun, right? It's yeah. fun because you get to hear all the creepy music and all the silly sound effects, and like you know, and like rare in those days, you, you yeah. used to you got the whole game, right? The sound guy like me did the music and the sound effects. You did the whole yeah. lot, right? So I think it was, you know, to do all the voices. It was great fun. I, mean, I like that game. I thought yeah. it had a good little pop to it too. But yeah. Luigi's Mansion as well. Yeah. At the t- oh. Right. So the, here's the thing, right? Sorry. At the time when that game first came out, the, the, this is the first one, 
people didn't like it. Mm, right. Right. Yeah. I loved it. I adored it. I, maybe I have this something about ghosts. And then Luigi's Mansion 2 comes, right? I'm disappointed because it's on a handheld. <laughs> and everyone else is going, oh, that game was so good. It's like, you all hated it. <laughs> you all Last hated time you hated it. Sit down. I had to defend their crap yeah. for six years. <laughs> yeah. And now you're all like, yeah, we love that game. No, you didn't. None of you liked yeah. it. The smallest little detail in that first Luigi's Mansion, and they do it in Dark Moon as well. I just love it so much when Luigi, because he's so nervous, tries to like distract himself by like humming along with mm. the main theme. Mm. Like, it's such a good little touch that yeah. just immediately connects you with that you're, stupid mm, character. No, I, I think so. I, I think I, they've done a great like that. Yeah. You're, you're talking about humming along. I just, I just associated it to this uh, Saints Row uh, Four, where <laughs> the two characters are in the car singing along to a Paul Abdul song. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's always fun. More singing, yeah. In games, more singing in games. Yes. Like. Yeah. Let's get uh, some singing. In the, in, the, in the Donkey Kong DLC, like for the rabbits, you know, yeah. just go out. This, like, like the in the first game, they had that um, thing with the background kind of interacting with the music, so you put it pumped that things would go along, but they made it better this time. They kind of, if there's birds sat there, they actually they'll hum the tune or sing the tune as if it's right. playing. <laughs> love and it. I love, I think that attention to detail makes such a difference. It's not, people might sign up for five seconds and watch it, but it makes such a difference, like little detail things yeah. like that. It's right. fantastic like that. I like in The Incredibles, when Bob Barr's sneaking in, he's eating the cake, he hums The Incredibles mm. theme, he's <laughs> walking in. <laughs> <and> <laughs> like, that, that, you know, it takes a little bit of, a little bit of time to do it, but it makes such a difference. People really go, that's such a great little bit. And they it's remember so it forever, fun. you know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, how many E3s have you been to? What was like the first E3 you went to? It was for Banjo Kazooie, I think. Like really? 1990 something. Seven. Do you have a favorite memory, favorite geek out? You know, you know what, I, as experience? I was driving into that, I thought you might ask for that question. Yeah. And I do have one memory, but it's, it's like when we did the Banjo thing, right? We got, it was out, it was 1997, whatever it was. And we got called, we were sitting at the Biltmore like you always doing it, right? And we got called to the basement rooms. With Howard Lincoln, you know Howard Lincoln was Mr. Big, right? And, 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 and he introduced himself. And everybody yeah. knew he was very quiet spoken, but very serious. And he just walked in and said, uh, "My name's Howard Lincoln. I'm so and so, so and so at Nintendo. We have five billion in the bank and no debts." And then he sat down, and we were right. like, "Oh, that doesn't sound very good." And he, and he just sort of said, "Now, guys, just to get this clear to you, you know, we've committed this uh, twenty million to this for Banjo advertising, and he just went through the figures. It was like ginormous." Just so you know, if you do miss Christmas, that would be very bad. And we all knew there wasn't a chance we were going to make Christmas like And we all, the colours just draining from your face going, shit, he's just going to, he's going to murder us right now. So we all went, Howard, no problem, mate. We're going to be out for Christmas. You just, no worries at all. Went back to the UK, told Tim and Chris Stamper, we're never going to make Christmas. It's never going to happen. But luckily, they were making, they were making that, um, I guess, pro-am racing. Arse. They had a funny name for it. And, okay. and, and Joel Hochberg, who's like the American bit of rare, Communicating and Nintendo, Nintendo that Banjo wasn't going to make it, but we have got a racing game and then a kart racer. And Nintendo said, Look, stick the Kongs in it. We'll have that instead. That could be Diddy Kong Racing. Of they, course. Said, stick the Kongs in it. We'll have that instead. <laughs> so we were, we were saved, you know, from being killed by Howard Lincoln. But I never forget the way he sat there. And, you know, he's very emotionless and like, but just put the fear of God into you. You just shut yourself. You know, what completely. What is that? If, how can a business <laughs> guy do it? Can anybody pull it off? Was he born that way? Or I did he just have know. like, you know, when he was 25, he looked in the mirror and said, if I just play it cool and I talk know. about how much money we've got in the bank, I, know. I can perfect this craft. I just business. read that Game Over book, right? The one that I get in that book about how Nintendo started. It went to that story out how they got the yeah. Donkey Kong thing. You Ooh, know, I how, need to how, read that. Yeah, that's a, such a good, uh, so many great stories in that book. Yeah. But that thing where they... The, the movie company was su- were going to sue Nintendo for Donkey for Donkey Kong because King Kong was there, ah, so, right? And so, yeah, whatever. And so, yeah, and, and they went, and I think they they went for a, a final meal with the movie company. And the movie company thought I can't remember what it was. was sort of it was to agree that they couldn't possibly use the name Donkey Kong because Kong was theirs like that. And they had the whole meal, all mates and fantastic, and everyone was super happy. But Nintendo had been researching and found out that Kong was it was in the public domain and they couldn't copyright it, and so. Literally, just as, as the lift doors are closing, like, Howard Lincoln sort of said, and by the way, we're keeping Donkey Kong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was it. Went to the last, did all the meal. Everyone was super happy. Yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, it's a great story, but it's, it's more elaborate than that. But, you know, he was that man who just did that thing where him and Mr. Arakawa literally went store to store selling, selling the Nez. You know, That's store insane. to store to, to, to break America. It was an amazing story. Arthur, yeah, who's yeah. the most impressive businessman in the industry? Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Is there the one most that impressive out? businessman I've, yeah, I've ever Yeah, the, the most important, where you're like, where you said, this person's smart. They're getting stuff done in the industry. Is there one figure above yeah, all my else? boss. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, I think, yeah. Because if you think, he was the guy that was, like, prior to TT, he was, like, EA, and, and he was, like, involved in the early days of FIFA. But, like, he was the guy that just went, wouldn't it be great if we put Star Wars with Lego? And and it's like, 
You're crazy, right? Yeah. What? Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. number one choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, number one choice. No, but... Like, number one movie franchise. No, but right? actually, yeah. I think yeah. that, 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 that on Netflix, there's this... Uh, the toys that made us yeah. uh, t-shirts they, they have an they have an episode about lego that you know, i had to watch uh, because it's danish um <laughs> and i have uh, friends working at lego um and then also former co-workers of io is, is at lego we talked about that yeah, earlier, yeah. But, mm. um and 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 i think that 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 whole lego story is it's it's really incredible how how they kind of you know recouped after almost stopping entirely right from licenses alone or no no the lego was no, when, you know, yeah, literally about to kind of yeah, just on the brink right of there, a, yeah, a yeah. ruin just right so, yeah. yeah 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 and then they 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 managed to to kind of uh, you know I, you know, you go watch it. It's 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 a good story, and it's a really amazing what job what they did. And I think it's it's like it's like, you know, I have so many so many fun memories of Legos, uh, and, and uh, as a, as a kid, kid yeah. right? It's, like, yeah, it's yeah, insane. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm still kind of drawing on, on on those experiences when when doing the games that we do. Um, but Lego but, Hitman, so close. So close. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're killing cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This could be it. This that, could that, be it. Lego Conquer, come on. <laughs> Lego Conquer is is, is more uh, mighty uh, pillars yeah, yeah, as yeah. Lego would be fantastic. No, but but to, you should check it out. It, it's it's a great story, and I think that they they are they are awesome, and they are yeah. super good at what they're doing. And it's and like, so they they had the foresight to say yes, we can connect it to Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. Because of your boss. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of Tom's idea, but he couldn't get anyone to take it. What? Like, like in terms of the game, no one would, no one would touch it because they were like, "I'm not going to buy that." Yeah, you're crazy, right? Um, yeah. mm. and, and, Who says no and, to brands? Like and and that? and in in the end, obviously, you know, it it it, it came out and it was a big success and and it's been great. So mm. that's that's a clever cookie. Mm. Um, I, I, I and to, he I, pays my wages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What more can you ask for? No, yeah, but exactly. I think that the original Lego Star Wars game was a really, really, really solid it game, right? Brilliant. It's like brilliant, yeah, it was brilliant, right? Yeah, so, it was so brilliant. my son put uh, that it's like. You know, no, but that the, there have been other kind of you know tie-ins and franchises where I said, yeah, okay, why play it? But the Lego games totally. right, really kind of just nailed it. It's just right? something different enough, and I think it was a nostalgia. Like I was in high school, but still, all my friends basically were playing on modded Xboxes. But it's like, hey, you gotta play this yeah, Lego yeah. Star Wars game, and it's great. Yeah, I'm sure my son got the first level on on some kind of demo disc or something. But did it did it come out? Negotiations, I think it did. He yeah. got something okay. from somewhere. He, he just he just thought I'll oh, just try it. And he just probably like, an official PlayStation mag. It was something, something like weird that. like that. But he, said, he just the, absolutely... in the days when you had real magazines and <laughs> yeah. demo discs. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the one half still around with Game Informer. Yeah. But yeah, I hear what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I used to love the the, the bootstrap demos. It's, yeah, because you get a little taste, don't you? Yeah, And he just he just played it. He was he just got sold it. I remember that's how I got lemmings on my Amiga. Right. right oh, oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Oh, ah. I remember playing that. Bloody yeah. Oh, I remember testing that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not on the Amiga. It was a later version. But yeah. yeah really? Yeah, yeah, you got before your I was at TT, I was, yeah, I was a tester at Signotus. So oh, I was testing okay. like Destruction Derby and Wipeout. And, oh, God. Um, those were the days, right? And then some games that were like probably not so great, like uh, Cyberdeck and... Uh, Cyber so Cyber I don't remember. He like he had a, he had like a van sponsorship deal and stuff. Okay. And all the dev team were walking around in vans, t-shirts, <laughs> vans. Why all us testers were just like you know, <laughs> sitting there, you know, playing the same level sleep. over and over yeah, and, 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 and going, over. Guys, this is really this is really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like, just shut up, you don't know nothing. It's like <laughs> I, I know a good game, and yeah. this is not a good game. It's mm, like yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. And I remember Ray used to always read that that's where the designers came from from the from the tester field. They'd, they'd sort out all the testing guys, and there'd be ones that would obviously obviously shine. Yeah. That would, and those are the guys got picked off to be to be set the designers. Yeah. yeah. Always because they played so many games and they knew so much stuff. Yeah. But you'd get yeah. guys know were really clever that would get it. Like, you know every puzzle structure in the world just memorized. You can carry it for yeah. the rest. <laughs> always the old one two. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Old one two. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, it used to be funny, just like yeah. God, this guy's yeah, he's he's you know pointing stuff out, and it's like it's pretty obvious. <laughs> this is good. This is not good. It's like how is that difficult? How can you hilarious. all not see this? Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I remember yeah, working with QA on 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 one of the first games where where I I I, I wanted to talk to the test and file the buck. And then, and then uh, uh, another colleague said, don't, "Don't talk, don't talk to the testers because then they're just gonna come up with ideas." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like "What? Game, you idiot! Yeah, like, we we'll have to be more well, Don't do that. Isn't that a good thing?" <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Any other God. stories from E3 this year? You guys want to share anything you want to get off your chest about impressions of the show, anything like that? Favorite I interactions didn't... with anybody? Oh, I didn't see enough. Yeah, I'm, I I have mm. so much live feeds and YouTube stuff. I need to go through the next week, right? It's I, like, I watched loads of stuff. Did you? Uh, yeah, and 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 some of the stuff, 
where everyone's like going into meltdown about how amazing it is. Cyberpunk? No, no, I'm on like Death Stranding. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's post-apocalyptic pizza delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm sure the final game will be amazing, uh -huh. but I, I'm, I'm watching the trailer going, this, you don't have delivery in America, I don't think. It's like, like it's, it's like the guys that go on, they, they got bikes and they have food in the... Yeah, like, we got cars in America. Yeah, we don't know anything about bikes. So. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, you've got Uber Eats, right? So yeah, it's yeah, people yeah. that deliver food. So yeah, in England, yeah. we've got Deliveroo. They have like a insulated bag. Deliveroo? Uh, uh, yeah, like a box on the yeah, back. Yeah. There are yeah. other, other, you know, other delivery services are available. Not, no, not, but, not but, yeah, and they ride around on, on, on push bikes All right. um, with food in the back that comes from your local restaurant. Um, yeah, but imagine if a ghost am, was am, chasing them. Am, am I the only one? No, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's like, this is like virtual post-apocalypse. No, but I, just, I, I was like, okay, am I the only one that picked on, on the whole delivering and then the baby, delivering a baby? Oh. Is the no, main... that's because your wife was a midwife, That's right? true. Right. Yeah, 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 that's true. Right. So that's yeah, yeah, why yeah. you zoned yeah. into that. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, it starts with the baby lying inside something, right? Yeah, yeah it's kind of like yeah. a weird bubbly so it's thing. Like, yeah. He taps it like ding, that's ding. like the long term delivery. Maybe that's like his first mission. No, but but game, you know, but that, that I like just I just keep getting back to this whole this carrying a baby as a man. There's, some, yeah. there's something on going on there. That there's something going on mm. there. Other than the obvious, like that's Kojima, and then Metal Gear is the baby, and then it's being torn away from. Uh, you, like you've all the you've been thinking about that's this. All the oh, okay, way way too deep. Okay, okay, like snapping the neck of his dad. That's way too stuff, way too man. deep. Yeah. That, that's a lot of money to just have a bit of a bitch at your <laughs> company, right? Yeah. Come on. Let's just <laughs> so one thing to have on. Let's yeah. just go for it, man. Get um, your Guillermo del Toro in there. Let's I, I, I tell you what I did do, though. I got to play uh, the new Destiny 2 mode, oh. um, oh, Gambit okay. mode. Yeah, right? what'd you think? I, I, I like, I don't, you never get to play anything when we're working, do you? No, no, no. You never get to, you, you're just doing stuff all day and you're focusing. Focus. But anyway, I got to go and play it. And it's really cool. It's like the PvE mixed with PvP thing. Yeah, I don't understand the acronyms. Like, I don't know. It's like, oh, the new mode, or do, 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 and in the same words, I just like, I, I don't know. Just do yeah. I shoot people? And the guy I was with was just like, don't worry, just shoot people and run around and don't die. So like, okay, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and I'm running around and it's like, what are these triangles? Just pick the triangles up. Okay, pick the triangles up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it was like it was it was bizarrely enjoyable. It's gonna be nice just to not see a Lego on a screen for like that 20 minute span. You know, just get a nice break. Especially got triangles, right? Triangle right, not squares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How can that exist? Yeah. 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 I, what is this? <laughs> it's <laughs> not go in the hole. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. Is it? It's just wrong. I mean, like, you know, yeah. yeah. I know, but that 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 was that was pretty good. I'm super pumped that there's Overcooked two coming. Oh yeah, great um, fun. Yeah, that's a good game. Love I it. haven't played Overcooked. Yeah. It's something to do. Mm. You should do it. Oh. Get a group together. Okay, oh, that, that look alone is worth it. Okay, I, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna play Overcooked. Especially if you have people that come around that don't play video games. Ah, um, it's one because, of those games. Yeah, when we, yeah. when we play at home, um, my partner Vicky isn't into games, but she plays because she plays to being Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's just like, do this, cut the onions, da -da -da, da -da. and we're just like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And it, it's so much fun. Okay, it's like right, the playlink yeah. stuff. Playlink mm. stuff is so much fun. Mm. Just coming around, you know, getting your mobile. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just love stuff like that. Yeah, so just, I'm more pumped by stuff like that than I am for post-apocalyptic game seventy-two. You just um, want to be bummed out, or what's the problem with post-apocalyptic games? It's a bit bleak, right? Well, I, yeah. I, I subscribe to this industry when I joined it as. Video games are a form of entertainment. Yeah, I want to be entertained. I, mm. want, I want to have fun. Mm. I, I don't want a life simulator. I yeah. don't want um, to, to, to be like, yeah, made to be depressed. Last of Us, just nope. Yeah, and, well, actually, no, cause those, those guys do a great job. Okay. I don't think I'll play the game, I'll be honest. Oh, really? Because I get very little time, but I can... Sure. I preferred Naughty Dog when they were doing like Crash and Jack and Daxter. Have some and, fun, yeah. You know, the, the, the heyday of Mark Cerny, but... um. Yeah, I just I, I I'm super super pumped for Spyro. Yeah, the, right. Okay. <laughs> I, I just like I be, like to be entertained. Yeah. Um, I like. Uh, to have yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember Nintendo always used to say to us like, you know, it's it's a game. It's meant to be fun, right? Our machine just does that. Yeah. It doesn't do internet connectivity, all that nonsense at the start that they do now. But then they were saying we just don't do that. It's just it's a machine to have fun, and just that's what it's about, just the yeah. fun, right? And it used to yeah. always be like that, and that kind of. That kind of subtractive design that they do, where they pull things away yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. add things yeah. to get to the essence, and then they re-edit again. You know, add the design games. And I, we always felt Nintendo always felt like that. They never had anything else in mind apart from that. That was it. Yeah. That was their goal to have a fun playing something. You know, it's but, nice. but this, this this discussion is what games are all about. Because for every person like me that likes one type of game, there's people that like the other type yeah i only and want that, the dark stuff yeah, yeah. And, that, and i love it and mm. there, there's room for every type of game and every genre because 
there's just so much variety. Like Hitman 2, where you don't know what the tone is, but it works. It's mm. dark, why, but it's funny, it's but it's dark, murder. But it's but why they think, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. They, I but they, they, what, what works for me is that, that the, the game kind of takes itself very seriously, right? It's what you do with it that makes it bonkers, right? right. It's, like, yeah. it's like we give you some tools, and what you do with the tools, that's up to you. Mm. Uh, it, it, it wants to look crisp and nice and awesome, right? And I think that, that that's a good place to be. Um, but then we put it in front of people, and then we lose control, and they take over, right? I think that that's that's a that 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 that's also something about it in in that that is what the machines can these computers can help us do, right? We we've been talking about interactive entertainment. I remember having on PC some game where there were full motion video, and then you could kind of branching storylines and all that stuff, right? And I think that that we we kind of are in that area with hitman because of the mm. systemics and the, the all the theater pieces that can play out yeah it it it, it, it kind of adapts and, and kind of to what you're doing and i think that 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 makes it interesting and you're I, I look at my son like and he, he, you know he's, he's him and his friends do like PUBG to yeah. Fortnite to overwatch to league of legends and round and round when they get bored and it gets new and they get round yeah. and round, you know but he still wants to go back and sit and play like Mario on, on his Switch. Yeah. He still has that moment right. where he wants to just get out of that and just go, let's just play something that's just fun and colourful. He still has that, or like yeah. play Mario Rabbids, for instance. Like he still yeah. wants to do that. As, and then goes back to his, with his friends, you know, there's still moments like yeah. that, I think. I yeah. have my, 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 my 16-year-old daughter and, and whenever there's, you know, some sort of birthday and there's a lot of people in the house, then then the, all the kids, all of a sudden, I look into the living room and everybody's playing Mario Kart. Right, yeah. Even her. Yeah. And that, that that that's just like okay, that's this kind of fundamental fun that mm. just works. Uh, it's amazing. You get your Wii out and you do something like the bowling crap or something like that, you know, or something, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I think I think there's still Is space. That the official title. <laughs> 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 no, 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 but, but you know what I mean? It's like there's still I think there's still space for I that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bowling crap. That was bowling, bowling crap. crap yeah. Whatever it was, but I mean, it's, there's still space for that. I feel. I think that's all. Like it yeah. is, you know, I think you're right. There's still, all of it can coexist. Like yeah. I kind of feel in music, you yeah. used to go through genres where it'd be like it'd be the pop to the disco to the metal to whatever, and then it it'd go and go to the next thing. Now it just all coexists all the time. Yeah, yeah everything's yeah. everything's every hip hop and metal, and it's all together all yeah. the time. There's no it hasn't come and gone. It just stays. Yeah, yeah. hell of a time for games. Yeah. Hey yeah. guys, everyone's falling asleep. That's not on camera. Come <laughs> 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 by to close out E3 2013. I uh, cannot thank you enough. Uh, looking forward to your games so much. Grant, whatever you're doing in the future, I'm sure it's going to be great. Veteran it'll be. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Veteranistic. Let me That's tell you what a good guy Grant is. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, let me tell you. We do this Extra Life charity stream every year at Game Informer. Right. This lovely bloke, is that a good term? It's yeah. Good yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine yeah. chap. This fine lovely chap. <laughs> he sent over for us to auction off a track from Banjo Kazooie that no one in the outside world had ever heard. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, mm. and then we put it on a thumb drive. I didn't even listen to it. Oh I saw my the waveform. It looked like a good waveform, it, but yeah. I just saw the waveform. Put it on a thumb drive. Shipped it out to the person that bid the most uh, to help a children's hospital. That's uh, that's awesome. It's, so they have nice it's, at heart. Actually, Shami Shacha did uh, <laughs> roughly the same. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did an wow. album. I think it was called Music for Supermarkets. That was only printed one. Shit. And then... Yeah, but he's it. like mega famous like I'm not, right? So he's worth something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it is. It is absolutely amazing. We can't thank you enough. And everybody, thank you so much. That was just a clip from a larger show called The Game Informer Show. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or GameInformer.com. We take the fun opportunities and exclusive information from Game Informer Magazine and boil it into a show that airs every Thursday with exclusive cover story information, developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So come love games with us. 